Socioeconomic status is a main marker for sociologists, often referred to as SES. For the most part, this is referring to the intersection of education, income, occupation, and how these markers impact a person's social status. We believe in the concept of the self-made person in our country and that social mobility is possible. We tend to think of our society as being upwardly mobile, that with a little hard work and a little bit of luck, we can change our socioeconomic status. But for the average person, they don't move up and out of their socioeconomic status, hard work or not. On average, it takes about five generations to erase the advantages or the disadvantages of a person's economic origins. Within the span of a single generation, there isn't much social mobility. Wealthy parents tend to have wealthy children. Poor parents tend to have poor children. More than 40% of Americans born into the poorest fifth of households remains there as adults. So while in theory, the U.S. is a socially mobile society, in practice and reality, the economic structure and the institutional barriers, the advantages for some and disadvantages for others, make it unlikely that people will move much on the socioeconomic ladder. The idea that we're a meritocracy, meaning that people can earn what they're worth and that people gain power and status based only on their ability, is more of a myth than it is a fact. We also know that when there's a recession, it hits the hardest on the lowest classes. Unemployment hits hardest on the black and Latino population, while respectively speaking, less whites and Asians tend to be unemployed. Recall too that home equity is a major source of wealth for most Americans. The average American has most of their personal wealth invested as equity in their home. When there are race-based rates of home ownership, this then impacts the relative rate of wealth for different racial groups. Don't forget that the ability to increase net worth through the equity in a home and home ownership is impacted by many of the institutional practices that lead to discrimination, such as higher mortgage rates through redlining or predatory lending rates that may lead to higher foreclosure rates for some groups. Lower incomes and lower financial resources are correlated with higher rates of death and poor health outcomes and conditions. The lower one's SES, the higher the mortality rates. If you don't have a 12th grade education, you're twice as likely to die of heart disease or other chronic illnesses, three times more likely to die from injury, and twice as likely to die from a disease than those that graduated from high school. There are many ways that lack of financial resources impact those that are poor. The quality and access to health care may not be the same. Additionally, stress levels from being poor or living in dysfunctional neighborhoods may have health consequences. The majority of wealth is not earned, but rather it's inherited from family members. An inheritance is referring to goods that are transferred from one generation to another. It can be cash, but often it's another asset such as equity in a home, investments, jewelry, cars, or some other kind of tangible asset. These are sometimes known as transformative assets, meaning that they give people an edge on better socioeconomic mobility. There's been much debate in the past several decades about what is an appropriate rate of taxation for inheritance taxes. Some argue that if you have not earned it, you should not get the lion's share of the benefit for your ancestors' hard work. Some people think that all assets should be fully transferable with no taxes. Many wealthy people understand the absurdity of passing on millions, if not billions of dollars to children or other relatives who did not earn the money, and also realize that a great deal of the nation's debt could be alleviated if the U.S. raised inheritance taxes. On the other hand, often the inheritance is a family property or a business, and the family feels there's a vested stake in those assets. This is an ongoing debate with our federal policymakers. 
We know there are tremendous consequences of economic inequality. We think in terms of U.S. society as having class mobility, but the reality is that it's generally not available to most people, and when it does occur, it's generally very incremental. There are many more barriers to class mobility than most people realize. Lower SES increases the chances of poor health outcomes and poor educational outcomes. Whereas those that are born with more privilege will have more opportunities for better outcomes in these areas. One measurement of wealth distribution and the rate of inequality is what's known as the Gini coefficient. Gini is referring to a means of measuring inequality in society developed by an Italian sociologist, Corrado Gini, in 1912. It's often used as a gauge of economic inequality, measuring income distribution or, less commonly, wealth distribution amongst a population. The coefficient ranges from zero to one, with zero representing perfect equality and one representing perfect inequality. Values over one are theoretically possible due to negative income or wealth. As this slide illustrates, the U.S. is a relatively unequal society in terms of how wealth is distributed. Inequality of wealth in the U.S. has been on the rise and is becoming exponentially greater as time goes on. It makes sense that as wealth concentrates in the hands of the few, that small group continues to get wealthier and wealthier. These two illustrations are from a video that we'll watch for class about wealth distribution in America. It explains what equality would look like, what Americans think the wealth distribution should look like, and what Americans think the wealth distribution actually is versus the rather shocking reality of actual wealth distribution in our country. The poorest have almost nothing, and the middle class is not much better. The top 2 or 5% are off the chart on the scale, and the top 1%, that stack of money would be 10 times past where the rest of the chart ends. This is the 1% that we hear a good deal about regarding the extreme wealth that's in their possession.